I say this to anyone, you have to have that dream team. You need your vocal coach, your acting coach, your dance coach, your agent, your manager, your photographer, your readers, the person who's going to drive you to the audition, your parents. You need that support. You cannot do this by yourself. Yeah. You can't reach any level of success without help. Right. Help. And I say this, and they'll say, well, I don't know who to get to help me do this. I said, <laughs> if you were going to a movie premiere, who would you take with you? Oh, I could take this person and that person. I said, well, those are the people who need to help you now. <laughs> right. Let them help you. If they want to be a part of your glory, let them be a part of your story. Yo, it's your boy Business, aka the show venter. I've been about all your favorite shows and all that. BMF, Power Ghost, Power Force, Raising Cannon, Snowfall. I know what I do, man. This is the Love is Love podcast. Yo, this is a special episode. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know I, mean? I forgot I forgot the number of the episode because we've been recording so much, but I got a special guest in the building. You get what I'm saying? Model, dancer, cast and director. Go down trying to show you and one of the best acting coaches in the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? She trains your favorite actors, you know what I'm saying? Your favorite movie that you like, that you love. You get what I'm saying? Wendy McKenzie. So <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How you do like how you doing? I'm like, good, I'm good. Thank you for having me. You know, I was watching on Instagram, so <laughs> nice, nice. Thank you for having me, because I came to the Dreambox Studios. Yeah, well, that's where we at. Yeah, I had to come to Jersey. Yeah. I had to travel. Yeah, that's what's up. Yep. Of course, of course, of course. So, we just want to um, give the people a little background about yourself, like, for the people that don't know that's been living under a rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Wendy McKenzie, mm -hmm. and currently I'm an acting coach. And I started off in the industry as a dancer, and when I tell people that, they automatically think, oh, you used to strip? No. <laughs> right, right, right. No, not that type of dancer. I danced behind artists. So I traveled around the world with a diva, and we went to Europe. We went to, uh, we did the United States as well. And when I did that, I realized, wow, your dreams can come true. Right. And so I always wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I just didn't know how. And I know I can't sing, I know I can't rap, <laughs> and I figured like, where's my place? So behind the scenes is what I felt more comfortable with. And within dancing in music videos and on tour, I realized I need to be behind the scenes. I love just helping people get more work in the entertainment industry. So I became a casting director after casting a project for another casting director but she asked me to help her find people. And I said, of course I'll find people. My friends are cute. So I'll find <laughs> people for you. Yeah. But then I realized she got paid for the work that I did. And I said, wow, what's your title? She says, casting. I said, I want your job. And in that moment, I discovered my true passion, which is finding talent and helping, helping them get to where they need to be. Right. That's dope that you said talent. So how can you, like, know? Like, I know you could see somebody, like, and you could just be like, he probably got something or mm -hmm. she probably has something. Like, how do you know? Because that's, that's a real scale. Right. Like, that's not. I realize when, so Tracy Moore Marble, if, um, for those of you who don't know, she's a casting director. And she gave me my first opportunity working on a movie called New Jersey Drive. Yeah. And while working on that movie is when I discovered I have a knack for finding talent. What is it? I don't know what it is until I see it. And right. that's what most people don't realize. So you got to bring you, you got to bring your A game for me to see what you have. So while I was working on that project, I worked with an actor. Well, he wasn't an actor. He lived down the street from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember saying, Andre, come to my house. I want you to read this script. And he read a line. And as he read the scene that we were looking for a particular actor for, I was like, I think you should audition for this. And Nick Goldman's at the time, who was, is the director of that film, he was like, yo, this kid is dope. And I was like, yeah, that's how I felt when I first had him read the script. And I realized he has it for this particular role. And mm -hmm. whatever it is, like I said, I don't know it until <laughs> I see it. Yeah. And you, actors, anyone, you just got to bring your A game. 
Mm, definitely. So your background, Jamaican. Blah, blah, blah. Jamaican. <laughs> 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 fire. Of course, of course, yeah. So how was it like growing up in Jamaica? You know, what part, what part you from like originally, you know? So I was born in England mm. and my parents are from Jamaica. And so they had us, like most West Indian, they moved to England, have their kids there, and then moved back to Jamaica or moved to America. Mm, so my parents, yeah. after they had me and my three brothers, we moved back, to, well, they moved us to Jamaica, and then I lived in Jamaica for 10 years. I live in Trelawney, it's the country. Oh, okay. I okay, love okay, Trelawney okay, okay. because I just, I can still see it in my head, like, we could walk around with no shoes and be fine on rocks you know right 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 uh when i took my son there they killed the goat right in front of him i was like he's uh, not used to this <laughs> like <laughs> we gonna have the curry goat for dinner but he's not later. used to seeing a real goat and then having it for dinner um so growing up in trelawney it's magic it's beautiful we go to the river the, the water tastes fresh the meat fresh, the food <laughs> off the tree fresh. Right. So when I when I first moved to America, I was shocked because I was like, wow, everything is in a can here. Right. I was kind of shocked. So Trelawney is just, um, it, it shaped me to the person who I am today, you know? Nice, so and, nice. and bringing Trelawney in the picture, we'll talk about Notorious. Miss Wallace is from Trelawney. Oh, Biggie's wow. Biggie's mother. So dope, it's, it's dope, like, dope. I tell people, I said, your life experiences um, matters as it relates to how it affects how you move through this world. Definitely, definitely. So you worked with Big Les. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know that was a big part. That was a big part early on. <laughs> yeah. Les looked out for me when I was a dancer. She would always call me for projects. And then when I started casting, I would always look out for her. So... And, you know, she and even recently she sent me this photo on Instagram, like this throwback pic. I was like, oh, my God, it's like we go way back. She is so beautiful. She is so kind. She is so real. She's so honest. She's like who she is. And she has not changed, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, big Les. Oh, you yeah, really, you really know course. my history. Oh, shit. I, I told you not playing. Like, this is a love is love podcast. We coming with the facts. We coming with the, you know what I'm saying, with all started. I need to know how you know that though. <laughs> how do you know that? Nah, like I was um I watched a couple of interviews on you um okay. that you did before. You know what I'm saying? Went through your page. You know, okay. I do my research. Like Okay. You know what I'm saying you're not playing. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. So like how do you get like that um like that attitude, like you you really like no nonsense. Like you like <laughs> keep it a hundred, like from what I be hearing, you know. Like, you, you, you tell people what it is, like, yeah. whether you're training them with acting, like, whether you're working or casting them, like, you're not sugarcoating that. I, I know, like it, though. Right? I like it. I like that about <laughs> me. Um, some people don't like it about me. It's all good. Uh, um, but how am I like that? Because, you know, my dad said to me one time, he said, Wendy, you're harshy. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Dude, like, I just don't like playing games. I don't want people to think... Anything I do is a joke, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm an entrepreneur. Everything I get, I work hard for. So I will not let you step in my space and take advantage of that. You cannot disrespect my time. Like, listen, you guys came here all early and shit, and yeah. I live by that rule. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. Mm -hmm. That's what I live by. Mm -hmm. So... When I find people disrespectful to my time, to me, to whatever, I, I shut that down ASAP. So <clears throat> I don't know where I got that from, actually, because my mom is not like that. She's very sweet, kind, soft. My dad is sweet, kind, and soft-spoken. I don't know where I got that from. I, I will <laughs> say this again, and it's a, a thing I say to actors. Your history, your past shape you into the person you are today. As a female growing up around all boys, I wasn't taking no shit. And I let them know that. And so right. that's how I moved through my life because I have three brothers and I have all male cousins. And the minute somebody tried to test me, I don't want you to take advantage of me. So yeah. I would shut it down. So I think I carried that through my life. That's good though, because 
when you just nip it in the butt early, like you don't got to deal with like any extra problems. You let, yeah. you let stuff like hang around and like, you know, and that's when you get, you don't want to wait till you get really mad. Like somebody trying to, you know, play with you. Yeah. And you letting it rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, then you get crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to explode. I know. So you was a model. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> So it's interesting how I got in the entertainment industry. And I feel like sometimes you're, you are destined for your greatness, for your purpose, right? Um, and I feel like God shows you things that you need to look at deeply. I call it your gift. I call it your, it's like a, a gift box. And some of us open that box and explore it. Some of, the, some of us just throw the box to the side and be like, mm, whatever. Yeah. So my friend in high school, Calvin Fanagan, said to me, um, you should be a model. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's not something I was thinking about because I didn't know what it entailed. Models are photogenic. They look great on pictures. I didn't know if I had that or not. And he introduced me to a photographer and I was like blown away by how my images looked. And I was like, wow, I could be a model. And so I did. And it was a gift to, for him to even say, you should do this. And I said, okay, let me try it. Yeah. And it worked. And that's how I got started in the entertainment industry. And I loved it, but I also felt like I have a passion for being behind the scenes. And while in high school, people try to get me to model in fashion shows, I was like, no, let me help put the show together. Yeah. It was in my blood to do that. So I felt like I was guided in the direction that I needed to be in through modeling. Modeling opened doors for me. Mm. And modeling also helped me build my confidence. So when I walk into a room, I walk in tall. I walk in proud. Modeling yeah. teaches you so many things that people don't even consider. So it's important to, um, to experience life and try new things. And if somebody said, oh, my God, you look like you should dance. You look like you should act. You look like you should um, pursue a career in this. Try it. You, what's, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. You I know? think I remember you saying that. Like, you got to yeah. try new things. Yeah. Like, you can't be afraid to because you just don't know. Like, you're limiting yourself. Right. Like you could be doing something, you think you're good at it, but you could. it's like a whole other lane for you that you didn't even try. So if you have, like, your hands in a couple of things, you know. Yeah, just try yeah. it. What's the worst that could happen? When I turned 50, I started a, a hashtag called Wendy's 50 First Dates. And at my birthday dinner, I said to all my friends, you must take me on a date before I turn 51. I want to do 50 new things before I turn 51. Uh, so I always say, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Today, I'm going to do something new. And that's what yeah. I challenge people. Whether you eat something new, go to a new restaurant. I did iFly. I went uh, to a winery. I, I did snow tubing. Yeah. Snow tubing? Mm -hmm, it's so much fun. Uh, what was that like? <laughs> I love cold weather. I love the heat too. I love being on the beach, but I love cold weather. And we, it was, it's, it's safer than skiing. I'll tell you that much. Oh, <laughs> I'm <okay>. not skiing. <laughs> so that was fun. So it's just going down the slopes in a tube and it's icy and it's cold. And yeah, I liked it. Dope, dope. So you work with Eve. Yeah. <laughs> I love Eve. Yeah, I tell the people about that. That's a legend right there. Eve. Legends working with legends. I, okay, so I recently, not recently, but uh, maybe a couple of years ago before COVID, I did the reunion tour for Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. But maybe 25 years prior to that, I did Eve's tour. So I cast her tour. My boy, my brother, Hassan Sharif, brother Hassan Sharif, hired me to cast the tour. While I was casting the tour for Eve, Rough Rider Camp, um, D and Wa came up to me and they was like, yo, we love how you work. You mad organized. You mad real. You shut yeah. shit down. <laughs> you should work with us. And, and Hassan was like, yo, that's my homegirl. You mm -hmm. know, she holds it down for me. Oh, yeah. So I ended up going on tour with the Rough Rider Camp with alongside Cash Money. And we did a Rough Rider Cash Money tour. And that was amazing. And so even throughout the years, I would work with Eve on Fetish, her clothing line. Oh, okay. And then we also did reunion tours. And so it, she's always been that same person. Mm. You know, I, I feel lucky because I'm around good people. You know, I feel like yeah. I attract good people. Good energy, attract yeah. good energy. Yeah. Yeah. She was acting too. Mm-hmm. 
the Eve show. I remember yeah. watching that. Yeah, I remember before she got the Eve show. Before that even was a thought, I was like, "Yo, you are, Eve is mad funny. She's mad cool." <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, you should you should be on TV, like acting." Mm, that's dope. So you work with Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. MTV Awards, 1994. Yep. yep. <laughs> Philip. That's legendary. Philip Atwell uh, produced that show. Tracy Twinkie Bird, my casting business partner at the time, and I got the opportunity to cast Murder Was the Case, the 1994 MTV Music Awards, where Snoop Dogg, <coughs> um, we did a funeral scene. And we basically needed people. I, when I tell you, I cast everybody I knew in that show. <laughs> I was like, I need mad people for this. Man. We needed a choir, oh. like a real church choir, Man. you know? Um, and my one of my good friends, Jackie, got the lead part in that as the girl grieving over the dead body. So oh, okay. it was a it's I will say besides Notorious, that was one of my absolute favorite project to work on. Yeah, like that's definitely like that's a staple right there. Yeah, like that right there. Definitely like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you like get into becoming like a casting director? Like you, you started with the music videos. Or you was casting people for music videos. And yes, then you went... casting music videos. I was, again, I prayed. I I tell people prepare yourself for what you prayed for, mm. because I I wanted growing up. I was just like I want a cool job. I want something fun. I want something chill. I want to meet people. I want. I can't be in a in a room seeing the same face every day. I would yeah. die. So <laughs> casting came about and I started off in commercials, which I hated mm. because the commercial clients are anal as F. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this area is not for me. So I started casting um, music videos and I loved it. Red Hot mm -hmm. Lovertone was my first job, and uh, <laughs> Rich Nice, <laughs> shout out to right. Rich Nice, and he, Rich Nice and I are cool till this day, uh, I see him every once in a while now, but I cast my first music video with Jeff Bird, and I loved it, and then Jeff Bird did um, Al Green, mm. and then I worked with directors like Darren Grant and Dave Myers and Brett Ratner oh, yeah. and Tim Story. And these directors are, are now working movies. They're like movie yeah. directors, you know? So casting music videos was a dream. I got to work with name any artists and, you know, it's like Jay-Z, um, J-Lo, the Fugees, Wyclef, Lauryn Hill. I even cast for a project for Lauryn Hill. Like, and, and Clef, Wyclef, uh, I grew up with the Fugees. They hired me to cast their music videos, you know? So just being a part of hip hop history, my son right. brings that up to me all the time. Shout out to my son, Grace Scott. He Shout brings out to that him. Yeah, he, <laughs> he brings that up to me all the time. He's like, yo, mom, you're a part of hip hop history. Cause he was by my side. Mm -hmm. I'm on set with Jay and Foxy Brown and my son is right there with me. I'm working with Outkast, he's right there with me. I'm with Rough Riders, he's right there with me. So he's like, and, and for me, I guess because I'm in it, I take it for granted. Not take it for granted necessarily, but. You just keep going. You just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Like the you brand, know? you know, keep going. I was saying. You just keep going. It's something natural that yeah. we do because it's so effortless, you know, yep. you just keep going. Of course. So I appreciate everything that I've experienced throughout the years. And thank God for my son who reminds me all the time. He's like, mom. This is your work. It's look what they're doing this right now. They're celebrating these artists and you're a part of that. You know? Yeah. So yeah. No, it's crazy. Like I don't think you understand like the people you just named though. You name it Jay Z and Outcast and this is this is just a part of your life. Like, right. This is what you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is not no overnight success. This is work. Like you put the work in. Yeah, thirty seven years now. Mm. Yeah, I think one of your quote one of your quotes you said, um, dreams don't work unless you work. Yep. Yeah. That's so true. So what does that mean to you? Like, So we all have a dream, mm -hmm. right? And our dreams live here, like right here in our hearts. But in order for our dreams to come true, you really got to get off your ass and do some work, <laughs> period. Right? Yeah. So I say, good, let it start with a dream. Just like Mickey Mouse, it started with a dream, mm -hmm. right? And so now when you have that dream in your heart, 
then now you make a plan. How am I going to execute this dream? What am I going to do? What steps am I going to take to make these dreams come true? So this is my first experience in doing that <clears throat> without even knowing. I remember talking to my boy. He's a dancer. He's in Paris, chilling, having a good time. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I want to see the world. But I can't afford it because I'm 19. I can't afford it, right? Right. So then I said to myself, dancers get to travel, so I'm going to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. when, I, when I got a dance partner, started hanging out with Big Les and everybody, yeah. Omar and um, Keith and all those, Randy, everybody back in those days. And then I remember this uh, artist came off stage and she saw me dancing and I purposely just hit some moves. And she was yeah. like, yo, you're a dope ass dancer. And I said, thank you. Take me on tour with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then a year later, she took me on tour. And at that moment, I realized dreams can come true. No dream is too big. I realized that at that moment, as I'm traveling to Germany and France and Italy and London and Paris, I was like, wow, no dream is too big. So when I came back off tour and I'm, I'm in East Orange, New Jersey, yeah. I remember the guy at the corner store, like the candy store. And he's like, girl, where you been? And I was like, I was traveling the world, <laughs> living my dream. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah jail. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Hey, that's crazy. He's I was like, no, I was. I said to him, I was traveling the world on somebody else's time and dime. Mm. And he was like, yeah, jail. He <laughs> said it to me twice. And then I realized, you know what? Your mentality is here on this block. But right. That's not where my mentality is. Definitely. I see beyond this block, Central Avenue, South Clinton Street. I see beyond that. And so I was like, you know what? If I want my dreams to come true, I need to... Get away. Get away from here yeah, yeah. and really pursue it. So I started like hanging out in New York a lot. And mind you, on my block, Queen Latifah live a block over from me. The Fugees live across the street from me. Naughty by Nature live like maybe five minutes from me. Like Tretch, yeah, yeah. we used to hang out at Tretch House all the time. Jersey. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I need to be in New York. I need to be where the magic happens, to, where dreams do come true. So. Yeah, definitely. Like you, when you have big dreams, you can't share it with small minds. Yes, that motherfucker does me like <laughs> jail. Yeah, they're gonna be like, "Oh no, you and can't I, do that." And I get it. Um, in my neighborhood, if you're gone for two months, yeah, you are locked up. But I was like, that ain't my life. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, like, one of the things you said, like, when I was doing my research, you said, "Don't act, just be." Mm-hmm. So <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah, nah, definitely, because that right there, like, you want to just be real in your role, like, on, on the road. So, uh -huh. and, in, and in game. life, you know, you, you want to interview, you be that interviewer, be. Mm -hmm. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of times people, they, um, they act. Yeah. They're fake. They're not yeah. really committed and living in their truth. So that's why I say don't act because somebody in one of a class, I, I didn't even think about what I was saying. She's like, so what can I do? And I was like, don't act. <laughs> just be. Yeah. I said it just randomly. randomly. Like, yeah. This is what it is. Just be. <laughs> stop acting. Stop faking. Stop, you know, like not being committed. Mm -hmm. I play a game called yes. And if you commit to whatever it is that you say you're committed to, you say yes to it. So can we play that game real Yeah, quick? let's play that game. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. See, you're, do you're doing good already because you got to say yes. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Do you got on a pink sweatshirt right now? No. You got to say yes. Oh, yeah, mine. Damn, I'm, I'm messing up already. <laughs> you got to say yes. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I got that pink on. Do you like my hat? Yes. Do you think I'm ugly? <laughs> Come on, you come on. You, you got to say yes, because that. that's the game. Yes, yes. Did you eat boogers for breakfast this morning? Yes. You <laughs> see? <laughs> that's the game. Yeah. Whatever it is that you choose to do, you commit to it. So if you have to say yes to whatever, you say yes to it. That's what people don't do yeah. is say yes. They, they judge. That's, what, that's the no. You judge. 
Right, right. You see right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So yeah, that's yeah. why sometimes people don't move forward because they judge. They, I, I say you're too judgy wudgy. That's how I word it. You're judgy wudgy. That's real game though. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie. When you first were saying it, I didn't understand, but I just caught it. Good. Because if I'm saying it. I'm a dancer, I'm saying yes to I'm a dancer. Yeah. If I'm a casting director, yes, I'm a casting director. Am I a speaker? Yes. Am I an acting coach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when I got into those careers, I didn't know what I was doing, but I committed to it. Yeah. And that's what most people don't do. They don't commit. So whether this is your first interview or your last interview, you commit to everything that you do. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Definitely. That's a good that's a good mentality right there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Cause you like like I'm not on TV yet or I'm not here yet, but I'm gonna do it though. It's right. gonna happen. Gotta speak it into existence. You gotta say yes. Yes. I think you said something else too, like if you want to do something, you got to go to the people that, like, you need to get next to the people that's doing that thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you can't just, like, oh, I want to be on TV. Or I want to do this. Like, how are you doing? Like, what are you doing I to try to get that. that? Yeah. Some some people will come to me. and Like, for instance, if you want good headshots, actors headshots, right? Yeah. So, they let their cousin, boyfriend shoot their pictures. <laughs> or Sears shoot their pictures. Yeah. I said... That person is not a headshot photographer. Right. Why are you letting them shoot your pictures? They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. what, le their lane is their lane. But as a headshot photographer, as an actor, you need a real headshot photographer. There's a difference in how a headshot photographer shoots and headshot opposed to your boy or your friend shooting your pictures. Right. So surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with people who are going to elevate you. Surround yeah. yourself with people who are in the same field as you because your boy can take a picture and good, get that picture to your grandmother. <laughs> yeah. But if you're taking True. real headshots for casting directors to see, then make sure you go to a headshot photographer. Yeah. No, nah, definitely, because we be putting money into like other stuff, like material stuff, but mm. we're not investing into our dreams. Like, they, no, you're going to invest. Like, I, I have a, a good saying for that, too. <laughs> I got the same for everything. Support your dreams until your dreams can support you. That's heavy. Very That's heavy. So some like that. people don't realize how much money they put towards random shit. Yeah. And not towards their dream. I live my dream. I this is it. I eat, sleep, breathe this. That's it. Mm -hmm. I got nothing else to fall back on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this gotta work. Yeah. So every red cent I make, I put into this because this is going to elevate me and, and bring me one step closer to um, blowing out my dreams to make sure that it's something that I can live off of. Right. People, people are shocked that like I, this is all I do for the last acting, as an acting coach, this is all I do for the last, say, 15 years. Wow. Casting director, 25 years. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this has to work for me. So every red cent I put towards my dream. So if you are working a nine to five, you bank your money and then save it for headshots, save it for your acting classes, save it for going on audition, save it for your ring light, your, your, um, the materials and the things and the tools you need and the books you need to help elevate you as an actor. That's right. why I say support your dreams until your dreams can support you. So it's okay to have that nine to five or whatever hours you work because you need that money to help support your dreams. Definitely. Right? Definitely. It's crazy that you say that too, because like I always like got like a saying that I say, like it has to work or it has to work. Mm -hmm. So Period. yeah. So like when you have like other plan B's and plan C's, like that's just excuses. Like, when it don't work, you're just going to go back. Like, but if you just locked in, like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I don't care what I got to go through to get get to it. Like, how mm -hmm. much work I got to put in, how much years it's going to take. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people be wanting it to happen, like, next week. Yeah. But you got to put the work in. I want to look snatched next week. <laughs> okay? Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to work out every day for that to work. Right. Right? But people don't realize that. It's the same thing with working out. I have a trainer. Right before COVID, like I was working out two, three years before COVID, like hard kickboxing, running. I never ran. I got a trainer, my boy Calvin. He's like a son to me. 
Calvin trained me. I was perfect. And then COVID happened and I thought I was going to die from COVID. I never got COVID, mm -hmm. right? But I thought if COVID was coming and it was going to kill me, I was going to outrun COVID and die of high cholesterol because I went and bought all the lobsters in the store. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to eat all my lobster and die, just die of high cholesterol instead of COVID. Okay? But that didn't happen. But what happened is I gained a lot of weight because I was eating too much. Right? So... I say that to say is that what people don't realize, if you want to see results, you got to put that work in and understand the steps that you're taking towards it. For me, I stopped working out. So I gained all of my weight back and it didn't feel good. Right? Right. Same thing in acting and anything you want to do in life. You got to take the steps to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And put that work in, whether it's fitness, whether it's reading a book to help educate you. It's it's all these little things. And so people don't get that. All right. So we you know we got to get into Notorious, though. You know, okay, okay. know what I'm saying? Big, 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 big part, you know what I'm saying, of your career and just everything. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I watched that movie like a hundred times. I really? love that movie. Aww. Every time it come on, I'm watching that. Like. It was just like real, like it really like told a story, like yes. you know what I'm saying. And so, how was that? How was it like um, coming together with that project? Like, how did it start? You know, like the process with everything. You work with Natori. Like, there's a lot going on with that movie. It's a lot. You know, it's funny yes. when I first got the call for that job, Tracy Twinkie Bird called me, who's my casting and business partner at the time. And I, right before that, I told her, I said, you know what? I'm not interested in casting anymore. Because casting is time consuming. When you when I'm on a project, I'm 15, 20 hours a day on the job, right? Mm. And I wanted to just take a break from it. And she was like, no, but I'm casting this movie and I need my New York eyes and ears. <clears throat> Sorry. And that would be you. And I was like, uh, no. And then she's like, yeah, but it's the Biggie movie. And I was like, oh, wait, Big? I love Big. <laughs> I was like, I love Big. Okay. This is like, he's like my favorite rapper. And so, and she was like, yeah, so all I need you to do is one thing. We're going to do a New York search. I just need you to handle the New York casting of this movie. I said, okay. Me saying okay, not realizing the, the amount of work it took. I was like, okay. I said, good. <laughs> I'm going to be the one to find Big. I felt it in my bones. I was like, I'm going to find Biggie. I don't care what else I do. I'm going to find Biggie. Yeah. And the day they signed me off on a job, you have to have interviews. So I had my interview with uh, Wayne Barrows, who's one of the producers and Biggie's former manager. And Wayne, we had a conversation and he was like, I like your style. I like, you know, your direction, which, the way you see things going. And so I got the call the next day that they, they hired me for the job. Oh, wow. And then the day they called me, I called my friend Raphael up. He's a ball player in Brooklyn. And I said, Ra, I need to find Biggie. I got this movie. I got to find Biggie. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I got to introduce you to my boy because he knows this guy named Gravy. Boom. Yeah. And so the same day I got the job, I called Raphael and then they got me in touch with Gravy. Mm. Just like that, right? So as I'm talking to Gravy throughout the weeks and then I bring him into audition, the studios call me, Fox Searchlight, and says, wait, you have Jamal Willard coming in to audition for you. And I say, yeah, why? And they were like, because we've been trying to get him for months, and he was not returning our calls. Wow. So then one day Jamal and I were hanging out, because I like to hang out with my actors and talk to them. And I said, the studio's been trying to reach you. What's up? He didn't reach back <laughs> out to them. He was like, he was like, nah, I don't trust them. I was like, what do you, what do you mean you don't trust them? He goes, He's like, yeah, they just call me, and they just want all this. And I was like, yeah, but it's a movie, and it's a good opportunity. I said, but you returned my phone call. Why? He goes, I trust you. I said, but you don't know me. You never mm -hmm. met me before that. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's something about you I like. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just mad real with me. And I said, yeah. okay, cool. I said, good. Here's what I want you to do. I need you to audition for this movie, and I need you to bring your A game. And he was like, well, you just need to hire me because if you don't, Brooklyn, I said, if you don't do a, a good job, I'm going to tell Brooklyn that you fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So me and him just hit it off <laughs> right away and we connected. And so I would 
read with him when he came into audition, send the tapes in to George Tillman. George Tillman is our director. Lane Burrs is our producer. Mark Pitts, Puff Daddy, everybody. So, and um, um, Valletta Wallace and Tracy Twinkie Burrs, L.A. Casting. And we just, um, that was magic. Like, I knew something special was going to be, was going to take place in regards to that film. And as I saw the actors come in one at a time, I remember Antonique Smith, who's from Jersey too. Mm. She came in and she, as she was coming, Jamal was leaving. Yeah. And then they looked at each other like, you know, that chemistry was oh, like magic. Yeah. And I was like, I like that. I could see that. I could feel that good energy. Mm -hmm. And so the only person that no one saw was Notori, who played Notori Nothing, who auditioned for Little Kim. And I remember Notori coming in separately, like way after everybody. Mm -hmm. And Twinkie was like, oh, yeah, there's this girl. She's from 3LW. She's on Broadway right now. And so I went to see her on Broadway. And I was like, wow, she's in Hairspray. You she's didn't know her yet? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. And I was like, wow, she's dope. And then she's from East Orange, New Jersey again. And so I went back to my office and I said to my producer, Wayne, I said, I want you to come with me to see Notori on stage. You're going to like this young girl. He came with me, and he was like, yo, she's dope. And so I said, good. We're going to bring her into audition for Little Kim. So she came in. So everyone who came in for the part of Little Kim gave that Little Kim how she is now, right? Right, right. But if you read the script, it starts off as Kimberly, um, Kimberly Jones. Mm -hmm. So I said, when Notori came in, and I said, I, I, something is missing. I said to Notori, can you come back the next day and have a general meeting with me? She said, sure. When she came back in, she had no makeup on. She was very casual herself. And immediately when I saw her, I don't even think I told her this. I said, that's Kimberly Jones. Everyone wow. came in as little Kim, but mm -hmm. no one came in as Kimberly Jones. Right. And I was like, I see something there. The it, real Kim. Well, yeah. What it is, that's when I saw it in her. Yeah. And so when she came in, and so I sat down, we talked. And then as we talk, I said to her, how can you relate to this story? She said, I, I can't. I don't. And then I said to her, have you ever felt real pain, real hurt? And then she said, yeah, when her group kicked her out. And I said, that's what you need to use for this. Right. And then immediately I can see the shift in her eyes and she connected. Sometimes we got to tap into ourselves and our life experiences to help flush out a scene or flush out our character. And that's what happened. And, she, and I opened that inside of her. And then I said, come back in. And the minute she came back in and she auditioned again, I sent the tape to L.A. And they were like, wow, there was a big difference. I didn't tell them our conversation. Right. And I said... She's, the, I said, she's the one. And mm. then they, they put her through the audition process. And then it was like, then they started seeing my vision. Wow. That's, that's so dope. Like I remember at the actors workshop, um, the, the interview I was mm. with Corey, like you always wanted to like put that realness, like in the scene, like, mm -hmm. like related to your real life. Like yeah. don't just read words off the paper. Right. So I see, it's not enough yeah. to read the words off the paper. You know, we all connect to everything that we see on TV, like in our movies. The reason why you fall in love with movies is because there's something inside of you that connect to it. And I call it that parallel situation. We always feel something that we can relate to what's on the screen. And so right. with acting, when I coach, I'm like, what's your parallel situation? Let's use that. And it really helps to, to bring out your inner work. It's, to me, it's what's behind your eyes. If somebody walks into the room right now, it's like one of your boys, and then you can look in his eyes and then you can tell something is wrong right. without that person saying a word. That's the inner work. Right, I want right. to see what's touching you on the inside, you know, yeah. connect emotionally. And so that's what I look for. And when I see that in actors, like even Jamal, he never acted before. But I remember he in his scene when he auditioned, he had to open a pot and say, damn, it smells good up in here. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I said to him, what's in the pot? He was like, nothing. I said, that's the problem. <laughs> There's nothing in the pot. I said, let's put something in a pot. What's yeah. your favorite food? He says, spaghetti and meatballs. I said, that's what's in the pot. 
And then now when he opened the pot, he said, damn, it smelled good up in here. You know, because mm. now it was more real to him. Yeah. And that's what I try to bring out in acting is uh, as well as when I'm casting a project, I said, make it real to you. Right. Right. Yeah. Because like, he was like smelling like what he mm -hmm. was saying when he covered the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He played that role, man. I'm yeah. Like, wow. And, and he of was... course, he got an acting coach. Well, we, the studio got him an acting coach who helped him uh, along the way. But I have to see it. When I saw it, I was like, he can, the first thing I told the producers in LA, I was like, he follows direction well. That's right. key. You know, sometimes right. people just don't follow direction. They don't listen. Yeah. You got to listen when you speak. How are you an actor? You got to listen and follow direction. Mm -hmm. that, and that's the importance of the yes game we played earlier. Once you yeah. say yes to it, you got to commit to it. And once you commit to it, you can deliver whatever you need to deliver. That's dope. I, I seen he did like an interview. He was talking about you. I, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? The Vlad interview? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> he was like, he came in there. He was like, you got to you gotta audition. He's like, what? Wait. And then. Let me tell you a funny story. <laughs> so when he came in with his rah-rah, you know, like he swagged out and shit. Yeah. I met Biggie because Biggie auditioned for New Jersey Drive. Oh, wow. I had a deja vu All moment right. when Gravy came in. Gravy was walking towards me, and I could see it like it was yesterday. And I immediately dropped into seeing Biggie when Biggie was walking towards me. And Biggie had like two people with him, and he and nobody knew who Big <clears throat> nobody who knew who Big was at the time because Biggie didn't have an album out yet. But mm. I knew who he was because he did a song with um, Supercat called "Dolly My Baby," oh, and okay, I love okay. that record. So Legend. I was like, I'm telling my director and the <laughs> producers, and I'm like, yo, this is nigga Biggie, and he's dope as hell. You know, he's about to pop. But because he wasn't famous yet, it was like, whatever uh... to them. So when Gravy came in, I was like, that's Biggie. Yeah. I can feel the energy. I can feel the vibe. I can feel the essence. I, can, I felt it all in my bones. I was like, that's Biggie. But it's not for me to convince anyone the only person i cared about believing this person is the right person for the job was miss wallace and she came in the room and said that's my son that's what that's what he said yeah yeah so it was a room just like this this size and i'm standing like right here miss wallace is here wayne burrows is here De george tillman is here tracy Tunky bird was in the back and and when he came in i heard her say that's my son Mm. I was like, boom, that's all I needed to hear. We got this. That's it. Yep. <laughs> nah, that's legendary. That's legendary. So, um, like, how is your relationship, like, with Notori? Because I know, like, y'all are super close, I see. Notori, it's, she's more like my mother. <laughs> Notori's a grown woman. I'm more <laughs> like a, a bad child. <laughs> <laughs> Notori is so smart, so driven. I tell her I look up to her. I watch her work when I'm on set with her. I watch her and Amari doing um, Power, and I watch how driven she is. I watch her doing the interviews when she's promoting her film. I watch her with her family, how she takes care of them. I watch her with her close friends, how, how she loves on them. I watch her now with her husband and her daughter. Right. She's like a mom and a wife. She's an adult. <laughs> I was like, she's really adulting right now. I am not adulting at any time in my life. I am such a kid. Um, and so she is someone I spend my holidays with, like Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's, and um, I, I love that girl. She is amazing. Dope. She's a great actress. Yes. She is amazing. She is driven. She, And in every job that she's on, she, we talk about it. Mm. I coach her for auditions. I, I'm there to help self-tape projects that she's working on. When she went to school for directing, I cast all her student films. Mm. Um, and I'm there if she needs to talk. She's there if I need to talk. She's, she's so driven and... I, yeah, she's passionate about what she do, and that's what I love about her. We have a workshop called The Power of Dreams, mm. and <clears throat> it's really to help aspiring actors understand that you do have the power within you. You just got to let it out. Right. You know? Don't just 
like dream about it. Stop dreaming and start doing. Yeah. I guess time. I yeah. guess time. You got to. And when you hear it. her story, not giving up after 3LW, she went to college just up the street at Seton Hall. And then, then Hairspray came about. And then that's when we came about. Mm. So working on the tours was her first film ever. Wow, never knew that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, she killed that role too. And Definitely. I knew it. I knew it. Definitely. I knew I was this is this is how long ago that was my space was out. <laughs> <laughs> my space. But you top and eight and all like, that time. Why you choose her? I was like, cause she's the best person for the job. I said, Y'all don't see what I see. I have an eye for talent. I know she got it, and I know she got next. Mm -hmm. I knew it. Mm -hmm. So, just like you knew that was Biggie. Yeah. Yeah. I just, and a thousand I just know. Other, and thousands of other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I felt it, you know. Right. So, how was it like working with Nafisa Williams? Nafisa. <laughs> That's my little girl. She's so sweet. Nafisa is from Philly. She plays in a TV show called Black Lightning. She also, I just saw her in um, the Whitney uh, biopic, and I hit her up right away. I was like, yo, you are killing it. Oh. Like, we always talk, but I was, I'm so proud of her, and another person who's driven. The one thing I noticed about the people who I've worked with in the past is that I see their drive. I see how there's a sense of urgency in how they move through life. Right. They eat, sleep, breathe this, and and of course still have family around and and just everything they do, they don't skip a beat. And throughout the years, I watch her grow. And I, I actually gave her her very first big audition too. Let me be your first. Mm. I am the first person that will give you a big audition or cast you in your first project. I'm that person who maybe help you with your first movie or just hold your hand and guide you through things. I'm right. that person. I'm there in the beginning of your career. And that's what my son reminded me of too. Cause again, did not notice it. Like Michael K. Williams, I was uh, alongside with Tracy Chunky Bird, um, helped guide in him. And I love Michael to death, you know? So he's just like an amazing spirit to me. And I feel like he's here with me always, you know, mm -hmm. just to watch him go through what he go through and still pursue his dreams, you know? And Afisa and Atori and actors that I've worked with, I just see it. Now, even like I'm working with Dream Doll right now and she's she's like, you know what, Wendy? <laughs> oh, just about she to ask you about like, it. <laughs> Dream Doll, well, I'm about to do this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so when I see Nafisa, <clears throat> she is a dream to work with. Her family is amazing. She's from Philly. She's driven. I, I love people like that. Because once I see that you want this, I will help you as much as I can. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Like It's like a pattern because like you're like that too. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? like They got like the same traits like you. So that's why. Yeah, I think you know that's why I'm attracted be, to them. They'll be yeah. connecting. Yeah. yeah. So um, you brought up Dream though. So like how like did you like... You um you, you gave her acting lessons before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I seen that yep. in the video. How is that like? She is also someone who is okay, so before so when I met Dream, Tore introduced me to Dream and I never looked at anything that she's done because I wanted to just see her for who she is, right? And she's very sweet, calm, kind, and she's like she knows that I don't play. <laughs> she always be like, oh my God, Wendy, I got to be here on time. Because she, 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 I don't want her cursing me out. I'm like, I don't curse people out, but just shut up and do what you got to do. <laughs> so, so when she comes into this room, she asks tons of questions. So she's like, well, what does this mean when I do that? Because as we go through the script, I said, ask me whatever so I can help you better understand so when you get on set, you're comfortable. Yeah. So I just prepared her for a movie. I can't talk about what movie it is right now, but she is going to, uh, she shot it in Atlanta like a couple of weeks ago. And I prepared her for a couple of projects that she worked on. So I told her, I said, you're opening doors for 
so many people who want this. And when they see you doing it, you're going to help people follow their dreams, you know? So right. she's, she's sweet. She's very sweet. And my son was there helping me with her um, to help her, you know, like when she come in and if she mess up on something, she feel like, oh my God, I can't do it. I, like, I don't got time for that dream. Get to work. Do it now. And I'll bring in a team of people to help me guide her through the steps that she need to take. Mm -hmm. And because when you're doing something for the first time, you can see her rock out a crowd. Yeah. But then when it comes to acting, because it's new to her, she'll like pull back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't need that. Just <laughs> yeah, do something what you new. Do. Yeah. yeah. But she got the right acting coach. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. She yeah. comes back for more because we've been working together for months. And although she, she said to her family member heard, her, heard me on the phone and they were like, oh, your acting coach, she sound mean. And she's like, yep, she is mean. <laughs> I said, if I'm mean, why you keep coming back? She goes, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I said, okay. She like that real nice. Like, you got to keep it on it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to sugarcoat it and tell me what I want to hear. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so um, I also seen you work with um, Jesse Wu. Yes. It's yeah. been a minute, Jesse. So, so, so a minute ago? Yeah, Jesse. <laughs> She's good. She's good. Yeah, Jesse, oh, she also asks a lot of questions too. Okay, so here's the deal too. So I'm not always on social media, so I don't know a lot of these people, mm -hmm. meaning like how popular they are on social media. Right, right, right. Right? right. So <laughs> when people talk to me on social media, the Instagram, then everybody's like, oh my God, Jesse just right, said right, this to right. you and that. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, like, I know. I know, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. But I see her success and I'm I'm glad to see that she's also driven too. I am lucky to attract people who are really driven. And and people know that when they come to me, they got to have their A game. Mm -hmm. So, she's yeah, she's dope and she sings, she's beautiful, she's Haitian. I love my island massive people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she represents that all day. So, I love that and she's very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's it's naturally funny, funny and yeah. talented across the board. So I wish her like all the success in the world. That's super dope. So like, how did you transfer uh, like trans um, transition into acting coach, being an acting coach? While I was casting Notorious, mm. so many actors came in and I was able to bring opportunities to them. And I realized, wow, they're not ready for this. You mm. want to be an actor? So my director would be in your face like, so what's your substitution? And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, guys, you cannot come into an audition with a real director yeah. on a real project talking about I don't know what that means. <laughs> and it would freak me out. And I would just sit there like, oh, this is such a waste of time. You used to feel embarrassed a little bit. Yeah. Right? Secondhand embarrassment. Yeah. And I wish they could be a fly on the wall to understand the process. And so Isham Tofik, who plays Dembe on the blacklist, was my reader. Mm -hmm. And he assisted me a lot on that movie. And he wrote me the longest letter. And he said, this is the best lesson you could have ever given me. I've, I've worked with him. He's taken some of my workshops before. But working as my reader on that project opened his eyes to the truth about behind the scenes in the business. And he said, he was like, wow, actors are really not prepared for this. <laughs> they don't come in with their headshots and resumes and they're, they don't know their lines and they don't bring their scripts in and they don't have notes and they don't make choices and they, all, they make excuses. <laughs> and he was like, I will never do any of those things. He mm. said, this lesson, and I watched him right after that when he booked a blacklist. And I just, he, we just actually spoke on Instagram because he posted a picture from the blacklist. And I said, wow, I remember when you sent me that first clip. And he was like, yeah, you are the first person because with all of what he experienced with what I did, it opened his eyes to the truth. Dope. So we're going to get into some acting gems because we, we like all the actors out there you know like they listen to what you say like if you if you if you talk and they listen it so you know what i'm saying how we gonna start it off is um i want to know like where should actors start like they not they don't have no experience but they have the dream but they want to put in some action 
Mm -hmm. Like, where should they start? The number one thing is surround yourself with like-minded people. So get in a beginner's class or take a workshop. That's why I do workshops too, because it's like a taste, you yeah. know, or a seminar. So get oh, in a class, oh, oh, start oh. surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Issa Rae said it best, network next to you. Not up, but next to you. So mm. the person sitting next to you, you don't know where you're going to be five years from now. That is game right there. That class that Nafisa William was in, Jeremy Burnett was in that class, Shauna Solomon was in that class, they all went on to do, they're doing good work right now. Derek Bernard was in that class. You might not know their names, but they are working actors. Right. And they all were in this, my class networking with each other. That's so true because you don't know, like, you, you just don't know, like, where somebody going to go. You don't know who's who. Yeah. Like, you're just looking for the star. Like, you want to get next to the star. but Right. Yeah. You want to yeah. get, like, everybody trying to get next to the star. Like, mm -hmm. you're just another person, like. You know what I'm saying? Their time is, like, valuable. Like Exactly. You're not Network with no, the person next to you. You're yeah, good. Yeah, you're not bringing no value. Not adding no value. Yeah. <laughs> so how important is your look, like, as an actor? The right look is, and, and I always ask people, that's the number one thing that when I'm casting, I the first thing we look at is your headshot, the right look. Do you fit the part? And like Biggie, if you don't look like Biggie, you can't audition for it. Yeah. It's that simple, yeah. right? So the right look. Um, embrace your look. Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm too fat, I'm too this, I'm too skinny, I'm too... No, embrace your look, right? Because there's a role out there for everyone. Look, really just look at TV and look at movies and pay close attention at who's working. Yeah. That's it. Everyone, you can be a lawyer, a doctor in a movie, or, or, or the killer, you know, or, you know, <laughs> just pay attention and embrace your look. Dope, dope. So what are some, like, top tips you got, like, for, like, self-tapes, audition tapes? Because I know, like, that's, like, a lot, like, because <laughs> since COVID happened, you have to, like, you know, do oh, yeah. self-tape. You have to do your tapes yeah. by yourself. So I say create a prop kit. That kit should have your ring light. It should have your backdrop. Here's a, a, a tip that I love. Instead of buying those collapsible backdrop, because they're hard to put back together, I always have to do a YouTube tutorial to figure it out. Yeah. So I just toss that to the side, and I went to the fabric store and bought fabric and just throw it up on the wall. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> that works. And nice. it's like $5 for two yards. So you're right. good. And I buy a fabric called Techno. That fabric does not wrinkle. Dope. dope okay. Dope. That's like my number one tip. So when you put your prop kit together, your fabric is a part of it. Your ring light is a part of it. And make sure you have people who can help you read if, you're re if you need a reader in the scene. Right. So your team, that dream team, you need that person to help you with your... Um, with your read as well as of course everyone has a phone mm -hmm. and understand the number one thing i will say too is to follow the directions they always say tape horizontally not vertically and i i teach a self-tape class and the homework assignment is to send me a self-tape after you take the class and people still send it vertically yeah and not horizontally when i ask for horizontally and why do they do that? Because they're stuck on Instagram, and that's how you tape for Instagram and TikTok. Wow. That's crazy. And yeah. I'm just like, this is not Instagram. This is not TikTok. Send me my tape horizontally, <laughs> like a landscape, like a flat screen TV. I don't know how else to say it to you. Right. So, yeah, read the instructions, get your backdrop, your light in, and you're good to go. That's a lot of gems, man. I just, you know, you just... And I have it on my Instagram, too. I have um, tips and notes and advice as well on my Instagram. Super dope, super dope. So I was going to ask you, like, what's the difference between, like, training kids versus adults? Kids are so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I love kids. Kids are so easy. You know why? Because they don't got hangups. They don't got taxes to pay. They don't got jobs. They don't, <laughs> their mind is just free to be. Fresh. They yeah. Fresh. If I say to that kid, 
guess what? I'm taking away your toys. They're like, what? And they drop into that hurt and pain. Mm. <laughs> they, get, they feel their feelings real quick, right? So a little girl, I, and I start at age three, by the way. A little girl I work with, right? Yeah. I said, your line is, mommy, don't touch me, right? And I said, you have to say it angry. And then she said it, and it wasn't angry. And I said to her, she's three. Yeah. I said, what makes you angry? What upsets you? She immediately said, when mommy takes my toys away and she hides my iPad. I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, say the line again. I want you to be angry and think about mommy taking your stuff away. Ooh, she said that line so mean. I was like, ooh, she Damn. made my body shake. So they connect fast. Yeah. And I use emoji pillows, not just for kids, for the adults too to help them tap into their feelings. Because now with adults, if and, and anger for some reason, sometimes people can't get angry. They just mm. can't. They, they suppress their feelings so long that they can't just show it. If I say, get mad right now. Right. Mad right now. They can't do it. You get in their face too and they still can't? They can't. Wow. I've had grown men who be like, nah, I don't want to go there right now. Motherfucker. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Do what I asked you to do. Your character is angry. What makes you angry? Tell yeah. me what makes... I don't get angry. See, I was like, ooh, I knew I'm going to have problems right now. Yeah. If, you're, if you got walls up, how can I work with you? So now I got to break your walls down to build it back up mm -hmm. and teach you how to tap into your emotions. I call it the emotional work. And we go from joy to anger to sadness mm. we as adults we got so much weighing on us that we suppress our feelings that makes sense and we won't let it out so kids are easier to work with because they don't care yeah like they fresh yeah like you could just you know yeah they don't them feel anything they, they yeah. feel exactly what they feel right then in that moment and they speak the truth yeah they're not going to lie to you. Yeah. Like, if, they're, if they're kids, they kids say something, yeah, that, yeah, they tell the truth. They'll hurt your feelings quick. Yeah. Definitely. So what's the difference between, like, teaching in person and teaching online? Because I know COVID happened. You started, like, doing, like, a lot of online classes. Yeah. You know? I started teaching 10 hours a day online, seven days a week. Number wow. one, to keep me busy because my mind would go crazy if I didn't do work, if I didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do anything else. So I said, I'll just yeah. teach. You know, so with online, I still connected to people. Here's what I discovered while teaching online. Because I was doing it every day, I got real good at it. Fast. Like, <laughs> I could get you there fast. Yeah. People are like, wow, I never felt so much so quick in all of my life. Like, <laughs> I, I rocked it out in 30 minutes. Damn. Because I'm, that muscle is strong now because I'm doing it every day. Right. But in person, it's, um, it's more intimate. It's a sense of privacy and intimacy that, that I love. And so it's more flexibility, too, in person. I could, I could be like, get out the room and come back in. Yeah. And let's do it again. And right. I move quicker in person, mm. you know. So one scene, I worked with somebody, and, and she had to walk in a room and say to the guy, like, yo, you're not returning my phone calls. Yeah. When you're saying that to a person, <clears throat> it's like, okay, you're not returning my phone calls. But if you have to walk in a room and say that, there's a difference in that performance. That's where we call the physical work. If you're physically doing something, it elevates the scene even more. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. Right. If somebody just come in the room like, you're not turning my calls. Like, what's yeah. up? Opposed Rather to than... when I'm on Zoom and I'm just telling them to do it and then they do it, there's that element that's missing yeah so i teach them how to do that on zoom but it's better in person yeah i get that so what's like your top five um best books right now for actors like right now the power of the actor it's the technique book by ivana chubbuck attention will be paid um it's a monologue book um da 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 da, da uh Failing Up by Leslie Odom Jr. It's an inspirational book. Um, the Golden Nuggets of Acting. I think that's the exact title of it. 
that's also something that has some really good quotes and stuff in it that will help you just stay focused. Um, a hundred scenes for actors. Mm. A hundred scene has a hundred scenes. What I like <laughs> about it, it, it has all the top movie scenes in it. And I always tell actors, practice the scenes, flush it out, and then go look at the scene to see what it's really about. Because that will show you like, oh, wow, that's how it looked? Okay. That's dope. Yeah. Like, don't watch it before. Yeah. Just make sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. So, like, you got, like, a technique that you do. I think you did at the actor's workshop. Mm -hmm. The shakedown. Shakedown countdown. The shakedown is an acting exercise that allows you to get rid of your jitters. So, it's like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7. And then you do your legs and your legs. Right? Within doing that... It releases all of the nervous energy. And I encourage people to just do it when they wake up. If you're feeling nervous about your day, anxiety, it will release all of that. Mm -hmm. And my students tell me that when they're on set and they, right before they have to go on, they do it and it helps calm them. Yeah, I see that though, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's a good technique because you got your stuff together, but you get in a room and you see all these famous people right yeah. imagine jamal being on set angela bassett and he's like oh shit that's angela bassett you know <laughs> yeah that's Derek luke that's puff daddy like right there and i'm going and watching it's like it could get a little nerve wracking yeah uh, definitely so um what are some tips to crying on cue okay here's my number one tip <laughs> <laughs> So I tell people it's a combination of things, right? So as I look into your eyes, look into my eyes, yeah. you want to stay focused, right? To stay focused. And within staying focused now, I don't want you to blink. Just lock eyes with me, right? Now, even if you have to blink, you blink, blink softly, but stay focused. When you're thinking about something that saddens you, a loved one passing, you want to think about what that does to you and how it affects your life, right? So you stay focused and you lock into that person and you see that person. Now within that, you want to also think about music or anything or something that um, means something to you. You want to hold on to that as well and lock into that. And as you think about it, you'll start feeling the sadness and then the hurt and the pain and how it would feel to let go of someone who you love the most that will never see you get married. Imagine that. Will never experience your kids. Imagine that. Will never celebrate your birthday again. Imagine that. Oh, man. Yeah. Right? That's I see I see what that do. Cause like you you not blinking and then you start dick like yeah. And you you crying on cue there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good, that's good. <laughs> that's good, like the that's a major gem. Major gem for actors out yeah. there. And I, I have that on my Instagram too, because people say they did it. And yeah, it does work because I'm have tears in my eyes now. Yeah. But it does work. And um, and he said he followed everything that I did, and he just started crying. He's like, oh mm. my god, that's yeah. That's and it's different. a muscle that you develop. It's you develop, and like I said, anything you want to get good at, you practice it. So you can practice just keeping your eyes still for one minute and see how that feels. Or you can practice listening to a sad song and see what that does to you. Or watching a, a TV show on Netflix like um, um, When They See Us and see what that does to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watching like a sad movie. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel like crying now. Like it works every time. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm dropping into Corey's character, the, the character Corey, and I'm yeah. seeing and feeling all of that pain. Right. You know? Right. That was hard heartbreaking so you can use all of your experiences to get you to those places mm -hmm. and cry on cue 
Yeah, because yeah. at, at Corey's event. Oh, yeah. That one guy asked that. He was sitting in the corner. He was... Because everybody's asking questions, and then he was like, so how do you cry? And I was like, oh, here we go. I'm about to get up. No, I was about to cry up there, though. I mean, when you was like, think about somebody that's close to you, I started thinking about my mom and my sister. Yeah. Like, I was just like, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, the that's whole it. room was, what, 200 people? They were all in tears, and yeah, I talked them through it. That's dope, definitely. And that takes practice. Yeah. Definitely. Years of work. Years of work. Mm -hmm. And you also had um, another exercise, the tongue twister e um, exercise. <laughs> I'm doing my research. Say, right? say big black bat three times fast. Go! Big black... <laughs> <laughs> Will you say it again? <laughs> big black bat, say it three times fast. All right. Big black bat, big black bat, big black bat. <laughs> say unique, New York, New York. Unique. Three times fast. What again? Unique. New York. New York. Unique. Oh my god. Unique. New York. Unique. New York. <laughs> <laughs> I said it right? That's what you said. <laughs> it's mad. Close to each other. I see it's that. close. It's close. Yeah. yeah so you want to practice those things because you want to warm up your tongue. You know, as actors, you have to read lines. Right. You know, you have to read lines. So you want to... Every time, like... So I read a lot of scripts and I also read with my actors when they have auditions and so i always if i feel like i'm fumbling over words i'll just say big black bat big black bat big black bat just to get that out mm. or betty bought a bit of butter but the butter betty bought was bitter so betty bought a better bit of butter better than the butter betty bought before so you say things just to it's a focus exercise it helps you to just just yeah out. flush it out no, that's dope. That's dope, man. We we in class right now. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was your what was your first I made it moment? Like I made it. Like I'm here. Like you know. Like did you have that or you was just like caught up in the work? I was just caught up in the work. I know. I know. <laughs> I was caught up in the work. <laughs> but I will say when I recognize when Notorious came out. So we did a behind the scenes of the movie. And just like this, they did an interview with us, and I did not know, not only is it behind the scenes on the DVDs, but it was also on YouTube. <laughs> mm. And I got my ex-boyfriend reaching out to me. He was like, oh my God, because now he's oh, married. Nah. He married, and he's he going to tell his wife, oh, I used to date her. Now nah, this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I knew. I was like, this? <laughs> yeah. Reaching out to me. Yeah. This must have reached a lot of people. And I realized that because Facebook was popping in and my followers was just going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, on Facebook, you couldn't have more than 5,000 people back then. So I was, I was at my limit. And I was like, okay. That's when I knew because it was, it, was, it was powerful. Definitely. I'm telling you, I told you I watched that movie like over 100 times. Torius is, man, I still watch it now. Yeah. Like that's, that's I, definitely yeah, I enjoy the storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, I was fortunate to work with, um, I, I actually worked with Big on the One More Chance video. Um, I, I love hip hop. I love the music industry. I love, like I said, I can't rap, I can't sing, but I, I feel like I belong somewhere in this field and I play my part, you know? You still playing your part. I'm still playing. What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> but yeah, we coming to the close of the interview. You know, um, it was great. I'm not going to lie. Like, I learned so much. I know everybody else going to learn, you know, but I learned. I'm in class right now. Right? So, yeah, definitely. I'm just happy to um, have you on here, you know. Yeah. We got the Dreambox Studios in New Jersey. I need to go tap in for your acting classes. I know she probably booked up for months. <laughs> but you go tap in, though. I make room for folks. Because um, Natori and I are going to do a workshop together as well as, and my friends, Kiki Haynes, who is on Tyler Perry's show, All the Queen's Men, Tobias Trevelyan, he's all over right now. He's doing everything. He just did um, The Best Man. Dope. And Tobias is from, and these are all Jersey heads. It's, wow. it's like I'm not prejudiced against nobody else, but these are people I grew up with and <laughs> I've helped in their careers. And then we support each other. And we also want to see 
actors grow. So we are here as industry professionals to help guide you through that process. Right. So I created a workshop where um, aspiring actors could come and learn from people who are actually doing it. Right. That's not just talking about doing it. Yeah. We're actually living this life. You know, this is our life. It's a lot of talent in Jersey, I'm not going to lie. Yes, and that's why Notori <laughs> and I talked about that, too. So we said we want to stay here and help flush out all the aspiring actors who have a dream to be successful in the entertainment industry, but they don't know where to get started. And let me be, you know... Yeah. Let me be your coach. It's, of course. I call it the art of the start. That's a class I have called the art of the start. Mm. It's here to help guide you in the right direction. Yeah. You just got to start. That's it. People don't realize that. I don't care what you know or don't know. Just start. Yeah. And if you mess up, that's good. Because yeah. making mistakes makes discoveries. Period. That is a gem right there. That's yeah. a gem. Like, you, you made a mistake and you don't know what you just bucked up into. It's like, okay oh, to make was... mistakes. Because you're going to discover something new and what to do, what not to do. Right, and you got like that real first-hand experience. Yeah. You're not just trying to like see what somebody else did or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this podcast, like if I, you know what I'm saying? If I was trying to watch other people's podcasts and try to make it like them or what should I do and this and yeah. that, nah, I'm just doing me. When I first started coaching kids, I'm glad I never saw anyone else do it because what I did with the kids I started coaching, everyone at my showcases were in tears parents, the agents, the managers were in tears. They, I was like, what is wrong with them? And one of the parents said, in their regular showcases, they only say their names and they say a fun fact and then they do a commercial. Man, I had them kids doing scenes from <laughs> movies, deep movies too. Don Shea Hopkins, who played um, mm. uh, Raina on Power, she was one of my students back then. She was four years old. Wow, she started young. Mm-hmm. Oh, four oh, years old, oh. and I pushed that little girl. Her mom will tell you to this day that I'm a part of her journey and I'm a part of her success because I saw something in her at age four. Yeah, wow. I have pictures of all of us, all the kids. I reached out to some of the kids recently because I see, I see them on movies, and I'll hit their moms up on Instagram. They're like, oh, my God, Wendy, we haven't seen you in years. Trust, I'm a part. Of, people don't understand. I don't need to get... No yeah. shine, but I will tell you, I have been a part of the beginning of so many people's careers. And I've still got little kids right now that I'm working with. One kid right. just did Rise. One kid just worked with um, uh, Kerry Washington playing her son. That, that kid is about to pop. He's amazing. I was working with him when he was five years old. So What's his name? Jaleel. Mm. <clears throat> it's like... And their managers who trust me with them, Miss Teresa, Miss Hillary Beckford, you know, it's, um, uh, I have a great support team. I can't do, I don't do this by myself. These, especially the kids, their managers are, who are the ones who introduce me to most of the kids I work with. And I say this to anyone, you have to have that dream team. You need your vocal coach, your acting coach, your dance coach, your agent, your manager, your photographer, your readers, the person who's going to drive you to the audition, your parents. You need that support. You cannot do this by yourself. Yeah. You can't reach any level of success without help. You right. Help. And I say this, and they'll say, well, I don't know who to get to help me do this. I said, <laughs> if you were going to a movie premiere, who would you take with you? Oh, I could take this person and that person. I said, well, those are the people who need to help you now. <laughs> right. Let them help you. If they want to be a part of your glory, let them be a part of your story. Mm -hmm. Period. That's it. And if they don't want to be a part of the story, you don't bring them no way. That's right. Yeah. Let them go. They're Sorry. They're no new there, friends. Right. Get yep. rid of the people who don't. Who don't work because they <laughs> i guarantee you if they see you in a movie they all want to be at that premiere no let them work their way to that premiere yeah yeah and it don't even got to be it's crazy because it don't got to be somebody you knew your whole life you could just 
meet somebody that's realer than people yeah, that you know that's there to like. support you and understand that process mm -hmm. you know when i coach people i said if you have a family member who want to come and sit in on your class so they can see <clears throat> one of my students she had her sister help her with her audition and her sister was horrible <laughs> and, and and she got mad at her sister i said but you're not training your sister to help you you're just throwing her to the wolves and be like here read this she don't know how to read a script right she don't know how to give you a moment before she don't. You can't get mad at her. But yeah. it was funny. It was funny to see her <laughs> be so frustrated. So I even have classes where bring your family and friends too to help so they mm. can see. So then when now you're home reading your script, they know to help you the right way. I work closely with parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. You cannot just, that. oh, let me help you read. No, I got to teach you how to do it. Right. So you could be working even when I'm not with you. The next time you come, you don't hear shit. Yeah. Nah, nah, definitely. You gave so much information, though. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I knew that. I knew you was, though. <laughs> I knew you was. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like I said, um, this episode is sponsored by Keep Going Merch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see all the game Wendy gave. You know what I'm saying? If she, she would have gave up, she wouldn't be here right now. So. You probably failed, you know what I'm saying? You ain't get to your, your your goal, your first goal, but just get up, keep going. You know what I'm saying? You can get the merch at businessandco.store. You know what I'm saying? Again, businessandco.store. Um, so we coming to a close, and this is the Love is Love podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Business Moving, Twitter, Business Moving, TikTok, Business is Moving. And um, Wendy, just tell the people where they can find you at, you know. Wendy Acting Coach on of course, Instagram. Of course, of I'm course. I'm not on TikTok, you guys. I can't. <laughs> it's too much. I'm too old for all that. So I'm so exhausted. But I'm on Instagram, so Wendy Acting Coach. Mm-hmm. Best acting coach in the game. Ow. Best acting coach in the game. All right. <laughs> we out. <laughs>